church, there was so much residual tension between Nate and Justin. I thought the experts should have let them have their own session to hash out their relationship. I got my notes. I hope y'all got yours. Let's get on into this damn mess. <laughs> So let's jump right back on into this part two of the reunion and let's get on into Alexis and Justin. So um, at last we spoke, we were trying to figure out whether or not Alexis came over to this man house drunk or not and whether or not they consummated the marriage. Now we're going to leave a consummation piece for a little bit later in our program, but let's talk about the whole drunk or not situation. Now listen, I think between Alexis and Justin, what we're really seeing is a case of semantics, right? But what they seem to be able to agree with, right, is that Alexis was there, okay? They can't agree whether or not she was drunk. They can't agree whether she was, you know, coming over for the purposes of sex, but they can agree that mama was there, okay? I think we can level set there. But you know, y'all, what really grabbed me about the scene, and you know how you're watching something and it literally transports you back to a time in your life? I was watching this scene and it literally transported me back to when I was in this damn relationship triangle, okay? Now, I was dating a friend of a personal trainer that was training me. He essentially became my friend. So I was basically dating the friend of my personal trainer. Now, I, of course, knew that they, you know, knew each other. I just did not know how deep their relationship went. And to make a long story short, um, one day when I wasn't able to hang out with the guy that I was dating, I found out that he and my personal trainer got together without me, right? Now, baby, I didn't even know that they still hung out like that, okay? Now, listen, it came to my attention through my personal trainer that while they were together, they had sex, right? So the personal trainer says that they had sex. The guy that I was dating surprisingly said that they didn't have sex, right? Now, the thing is, it should be very easy. Did you have sex or did you not? And listen, the only thing that those two could agree on is that they were in the same place at the same time, right? And I really think that it's the same case with Alexis and Justin. Y'all might not be able to agree whether or not she wanted to have sex with you. Y'all might not be able to agree whether or not mama was drunk, but y'all can agree that y'all were in the same place at the same time. Now, in terms of my situation, listen, trust is A1 to me. And because I couldn't figure out whether or not the personal trainer was lying to me or whether the dude I was dating was lying to me, baby, I let them both go, okay? And I freed myself caca, okay? Now, listen, back to Alexis and Justin, I don't think we're ever going to know, but suffice it to say, in terms of what I think, um, I, of course, think that she was there. I think that she might have been down to the bar drinking. And listen, what happens when you're down to the bar drinking? You get in a sentimental mood, right? So was mama there for sex? Probably not, okay? But was she there to talk about the relationship? That part, I believe. So y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what you think about the situation. Do you side more with Justin or do you side more with Alexis's version of what happened, right? Now let's move on. Um, let's talk about this residual Maya resentment, right? And look, I said this from the beginning, okay? Um, in terms of when, when the whole situation happened, I don't know if I would have given away my dog so easily, right? Because I wouldn't have known how far this relationship would have gone post decision day, right? I would have literally put the dog over there with a trusted family member, a friend, etc. You hold on to this dog. If we stay together, then I'll figure it out. If we don't stay together, then I'm going to have to, you know, bring my dog back and move on with my life. Okay. But listen, Alexis even said, you're making this decision off your own volition. Please do not hold it against me, okay? And even though that man said that he wasn't holding it against her, we find out he, of course, was holding it against her. Now, in terms of the Justin side, what it seems to me is that he really wanted her to kind of advocate for him in the situation, right? I'm making this action to give away this dog. I'm making this action to try to make our relationship better. I think in his mind, you know, he really wanted her to fight for, you should keep your dog, we should work this out, you know, we can find a way through this. And when she was just okay with him giving away the dog, I think that that's where the seeds of resentment started to build there, right? Um, was it fixable? I don't necessarily know, because if Alexis was truly so gung-ho about her dog as she was, 
I can't really foresee a situation where she would be fine with um, Maya and her dog Newton in the same place at the same time. I'm not saying that it couldn't work out. I'm just saying that I really can't see it. People view their dogs as part of their family, okay? And when your family member gets attacked, I don't know if she would have ever been okay with the source of her attacker or the source of the person of the of the entity that attacked them being in the apartment constantly, you know, for a future attack to, to potentially happen. I don't think it would have worked out. Now, um, in terms of what I gleaned from the overall Alexis and Justin situation, it is plain to me that that man still loves her, okay? Um, Ray Charles could see that that man still loves her. If Alexis said today or tomorrow that she wanted to work it out, Justin would be there in a heartbeat, okay? It's very evident. And I think it's, it goes back to what I've said before. This was a relationship based on him liking her more than she liked him, okay? And that's where it begins and that's where it ends. He found more value in her than she found in him, okay? I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm just saying that that's what it was, okay? And you can definitely see she's more on the outside and he's more on the inside in terms of wanting to make it work despite what he's saying. I think he's putting on a lot of bravado. I think Justin has two temperatures, right? He's either super emotional, can't control it, or it's this, you know, super macho masculine bravado. And it seems like the masculine bravado you know, going above and beyond is meant to kind of protect his more emotional side, which is why, you know, when Kevin keeps asking, is there a chance for reconciliation? He keeps saying no, right? Because he's trying to protect himself from the eventual hurt that will come when she says that she does not want to be with him anymore. Um, so y'all drop down in the comments and let me know if you agree, but I truly feel if that lady said that she was with it, he would be right there with it along with her. Now let's move on to this wives sit down and let's talk about um, this revelation that Morgan was the one that came to Alexis. Y'all, um, finding out that Morgan was actually the one that approached Alexis about her relationship with, um, with Ben was kind of eye-opening for me because throughout the whole season, they kind of ran with this narrative of Alexis being messy, Alexis being in Morgan and Ben's relationship, Alexis needing to mind her own business with her own situation. But if you just think about it, right? If your friend comes to you, right, and whether or not you've known this person long or not is immaterial, okay? And it comes down actually to that old, you know, conversation of would you want your friend to tell you information about your relationship or would you want them to keep it to themselves, okay? And in this situation, your friend is coming to you. She's hurt about her situation. She's begging you for help, okay? She's crying in your face. What are you supposed to do if you have the information that will help her make a more informed decision about her situation? Do you tell her or do you not? Okay. Now, Alexis told her, I probably would have done the same thing. And I think what Alexis can agree with is that could she have gone about it a better way? Absolutely. Okay. Could she have had more tact in the situation? Absolutely. But sometimes things come out the way that they come out and hindsight is always 2020, right? But to find out that Morgan was the one that approached Alexis and started this whole thing of Alexis kind of loosely becoming a parrot for the information that she gleaned from Justin about Ben um, was very eye-opening. Um, let's move on to the conversation of Mitch the bitch, right? And y'all, I said this back in my review of when um, the other wives, um, particularly Stasha, started calling that man a bitch. Listen, Mitch was awful. Mitch did a whole bunch of stuff wrong in his relationship. Mitch was not the perfect husband to Kristen. But I think that it is very wrong that the wives felt so comfortable calling this man a bitch to his face when they saw him, okay? I think that as his wife, you should have had a little bit more respect despite the situation that he put you through that, you know, you shouldn't have let them feel so comfortable in calling your husband a bitch all the time, okay? I think it was I think it was out of place. Now listen, the wives were on Kristen's side, okay? So calling the man a bitch was kind of a lightweight way of, of aligning with Kristen that her situation wasn't ideal for her, right? So at the core of it, it was birthed out of concern for Kristen, but also birthed out of concern of, we don't want to put you in a situation that you're not ready for. We want you to reach this logical conclusion on your own, right? So it had good intentions, but the actual, you know, implementation of it left a lot to be desired from me. And, um, you know, I really felt 
that it was great that Mitch got that apology from Stasha at the end of it. Because I don't know, you can feel a certain way about your friend's situation. You could want her to do better in it. But I think, you know, calling her husband a bitch every time you see them, even if it's in jest or every other time you see him or whatever the case may be, I think that's a little bit too far. And I think it's a, it borders more on disrespectful than helpful to me. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know if you agree or not. And um, my favorite part of the wife sit down was them talking about, or Alexis talking about rather, how Justin cried every day. Now listen, in the eternal words of Cat Williams, baby, I laughed from a good, healthy place, okay? To find out that that man, listen, I'm sure there's a little bit of exaggeration to it. I'm sure the man didn't cry every day, okay? But she said, listen, I'd have been okay if he just cried once a week. But the fact that he was crying every damn day or every damn other day, it was too much to me. She said, with every tear that he dropped, my uh, my attraction to him dropped even more, okay? So she might as well have said, baby, that every time that a tear leaked from his eyes, she became dry between her thighs, okay? <laughs> Y'all, I laughed from a good, healthy place, okay? Because listen, Alexis is better than me, baby. I'd have been on that damn camera and eventually when it got to me, I'd have put on a screw face and I would have just been like, what is you crying for, okay? What is you crying for? The crying montage is what got me. It was just, it was way too much. Women mostly say in terms of, you know, my friends or, you know, women in general that they want their husbands to be, um, not emotional, but to be in tune with their emotions, right? Justin is the extreme example of that. And it kind of shows, you know, Alexis and women in general, what you don't want in terms of the extreme version of it. So listen, I could fully understand because if that man was crying every day or every other day, I wouldn't want to have sex with him either. Okay. And y'all drop down in the comments and let me know if you agree. Now, in terms of this husband sit down, because we did the wives, now we do the husbands, they kind of leaned more into the whole Justin crying thing. And like I said, in terms of the montage. Now, what I gleaned from that situation is that these husbands were ride or die when it comes to their damn friend, okay? That was nothing but friendship love when they did that whole little round table talking about, well, you know, I wish I was more in tune with my emotions like Justin, or if I was more in tune with my emotions, maybe my relationship would have gone better. Listen, Nate was the only one that kept it real in that situation he said i thought it was weird okay baby listen everybody on nate's side in that situation we all thought it was weird but i thought that the fact that the other husbands tried to rally around justin to try to repurpose this whole crying at the drop of a hat into something functional and worthwhile i thought that that was a really nice move the other thing i gleaned from the husband's sit down is that ben and justin worked it out which was good because I think that Ben could have held a lot of resentment towards Justin for the dissolution of his marriage. Not that Justin was the um, the main cause of it, but more so that he was a, a very big contributing factor. Now, it's debatable whether the issues would have come out sooner rather than later and whether it was better for them to come out later rather than they did sooner. But listen, um, if you were going to have the same issues later than sooner, for me, I would rather have them earlier, but y'all may disagree. Now, listen. Justin, I think what this situation should teach you is that, you know, when you value someone's friendship and when you also, when your spouse is a mutual friend of that person, you know, maybe going forward, if they want to have a sensitive conversation to you and vent, maybe you go for a walk, okay? Maybe you put your AirPods in and go down the street and have an open and honest conversation without the added pressure of your spouse listening in. Maybe you go to another room. Maybe you decide to talk to the person when your spouse is not there. Like I feel, I I, I really believe Justin when he said that it wasn't a malicious thing that he was doing and it was more absent-minded than anything. But listen, once you are literally airing out someone's grievances on speakerphone and in pillow talk, you know, you're kind of laying the seeds for a recipe for disaster in terms of Alexis who, listen, she was trying to do the best that she could for her friend, but at a certain point, you can only take so much. If you're hearing about it in, in, in pillow talk, you're hearing about it over speakerphone, you can't help but be a parrot, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and squawk everything you heard to anybody that will listen to you. Like I said before, she could have had more tact in the situation, but I think that it was birthed out of a, a genuine concern for Morgan's feelings. And um, the same goes with Justin. I think it was birthed out of a genuine concern for, for Ben's feelings. It wasn't anything malicious, but if it teaches you anything, some conversations are not for every audience, right? Now let's move on. 
And let's talk about um, the expert sit down. So the expert sit down with um, Mitch and Kristen and Ben and Morgan, but they kind of do it in a weird way. They do it separately, right? So they sit down with Mitch and Ben and they sit down with Kristen and, and, and Morgan, right? So in terms of when they sat down with, um, with Mitch, in terms of talking about the relationship, really there's not... There's not really much I want to talk about just concerning the Mitch and Kristen relationship. I feel like I've talked about it ad nauseum at this point. But the one thing that always gives me pause with Kristen, and I've said this a thousand times, whenever Mitch gives her one inkling of, of a good direction or a positive move in their relationship, she magnifies it more than it needs to be, okay? When that lady's over there talking about, you know, I was confused about the divorce. I'm confused about where we are now. You know, we seem to be having a good time right now. You cannot let the 20% of your situation that was good overrule the 80% that was bad, okay? And my hope for Kristen is that she continues to stay the hell away from Mitch, right? Because Kristen seems like the type of person to me that if you let her keep going in terms of these mental synapses that she's she has firing in terms of maybe it wasn't all bad, you know, we seem to be getting along right now, maybe we should open the door of friendship, it logically will lead to more confusion in her situation. Don't let the 20% of good overrule the 80% of bad in your situation and stay the hell away from that man. That's why I'm kind of grateful for the reunion because you can balance out the good in terms of y'all being able to converse and have a nice relationship with the bad in terms of everybody talking about how tumultuous your situation is and how this is not something that you want in the future, right? Now on the Morgan and Ben side, um, what I really liked that Pastor Cal did was, you know, he encouraged Ben a bit because I think that, you know, I think it's wonderful that Ben feels the need to apologize all the time. Um, but I do agree with Pastor Cal that it, it can kind of put you at a disadvantage if you always feel like you're the wrong one in the situation. Don't get me wrong. It's good to wear your emotions on the sleeve. It's good for you to, you know, be open to apologizing at the drop of a hat if, if you're, you're, actually in the wrong but i think at a certain point in time it can kind of put you in a dearth of a situation because you're always programmed to take responsibility for something that may have not been your complete fault right so i think what he was trying to get him to do was to just up his confidence in terms of you know it's good to apologize when it's when it's your fault but if it's not your fault it's good to advocate for yourself in that respect as well now in terms of morgan listen Morgan needs to do two things in my opinion, okay? Morgan needs to work on herself and she also needs to work on her unforgiveness as it relates to her father, right? Now, I don't know the ins and outs of that situation. I don't know all the stress, struggles, and strikes she went through with that man. And I'm not telling her to get off the reunion stage, pick up the phone, call the father and work it out, okay? But listen, unforgiveness is a seed that will perpetuate through your life if you let it. And I think that's what we're seeing with Morgan, right? I'm not saying that you need to forgive your father in terms of having a face-to-face -face conversation, but perhaps go to therapy and work it out that way, okay? Because at the core of it, forgiveness is for you, okay? It's so that you can get forgiveness for a situation, give somebody else forgiveness for what they, get, for what they did to you and move forward with your life, right? Because listen, your being reactive in the situation is a direct result of your unforgiveness with your father, right? Because it's the whole thing of this person did one thing to me. I can't get past it. I have to cut them off at the knees and I have to move on with my life, right? So I think that if you work on yourself and find out about that whole situation with your father in terms of if you can forgive him on your own, I'm not saying to have a conversation with him. If you choose to do that, that's, you know, of your own volition. But if you can forgive him for yourself, so that you can move on, heal that piece of you, and so that you won't keep perpetuating that unforgiveness into every subsequent relationship, I think you'll be much better off. And that's my honest opinion. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what you think about that. Now, the experts sat down with Alexis and Justin, and y'all, to me, it's not even really worth talking about because I'm just gonna get into it extremely lightly. Um, what they like to do in terms of these reunions, and I'm glad that they addressed it because they say with some couples, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll congratulate them on, on the dissolution of their situation and they won't try to get them back together. With Alexis and Justin, I think y'all need to let sleeping dogs lie, okay? It's a situation where he's more into her than she's more into him. And I really feel that between the two of them, the reason why they can't 
function together is because they make so many begrudging concessions, right? On the Justin side, I got rid of my dog. I had to deal with, you know, you wanting to go to the club and wanting to get away from me and me feeling like, you know, you're trying to get an escape from me. On the Lex on the Alexa side, she said, I wasn't attracted to you. I had to get over that. You know, you were a bit too emotional for me. I had to get over that. I don't feel like I can be the woman in the situation. I have to be a more maternal figure versus the girlfriend, the wife, etc. It's all of these begrudging concessions, right? Now, listen, there are happy concessions in the world. Listen, y'all decide to concede in terms of you want to live here. He want to live there. You decide to live somewhere in the middle, right? There are happy concessions and there are begrudging concessions. And I think the begrudging concessions lead to resentment. And that's exactly why y'all shouldn't be together. Okay, so I think that it's great that they go down that whole rabbit hole and that mental exercise as to whether or not you can work it out. And yeah, in the grand scheme of things, Alexis made an emotional decision to, to end it. And Justin went along with it, even though, you know, he basically wanted to continue the relationship. But I think at the core of it and for the longevity of your situation, I think y'all made the best decision, right? Because at the core of it, if he likes her more than she likes him, it always puts him at a dearth in the situation. And if she feels like she's not getting what she needs out of the situation, she's never truly going to be happy. And she's going to continually make concessions just to, to, to disprove her whole runner track star past and try to be a different person going forward. I'm not saying you shouldn't try to be a different person going forward. I'm just saying that it should be authentic to where you see yourself and not because you're just trying to undo past wrongs. Now let's move on to this group sit down and talk about Lindy versus Stasha. Y'all, I had actually forgot about this moment from earlier in the season. And um, I'm glad that they talked about it and, 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 and kind of got to a logical conclusion in a fruitful way, right? Because I think Stasha's concern for Lindy, as all of our concerns were, were that this man pressured her into a sexual situation that she wasn't necessarily ready for at the time. Because if you are my friend and one day you're basically saying, you know, I want a more emotional con connection. I want a more spiritual connection. I want to get to know this man. And then 24, 48 hours later, it's like he cracked my back. We are so in love and we are so connected. It's going to throw anybody's spidey senses up. Okay. So at that point, did Stasha overstep? Some could say she probably did because she didn't know her that well, but I think it was birthed out of a genuine concern that she wanted to make sure that this was Lindy's decision and not something that she was pressured into, okay? So I think, you know, Lindy cleared it up and I think Miguel helped clear it up and they closed the loop on that situation and they're both able to move on. Now, um, let's talk about this whole consummation or not because I told y'all we was gonna get back to it. And so, you know, Kevin starts saying that Lindy and Miguel thought that they were the first ones to consummate the marriage, but you know, Alexis and Justin, more so Justin is saying that they was the first ones to consummate it. Now listen, baby, I don't even know at this day of point, you know, if it's even a fruitful conversation to go into because it seems like there's a lot of shame and feelings, especially on the Justin side concerning it based on them not really wanting to talk about it in a very detailed way. I think suffice to say for me, if there was penetration, there was consummation of the situation, okay? And so if you penetrate it, then you consummate it, okay? Y'all should turn that into a hashtag, penetration, consummation, something. Maybe don't do that, okay? That's a little bit wrong. Anywho, um, it might be another game of semantics on the Alexis part. And I think what was the most telling part was actually nothing that happened in the episode, but it was more so the preview for the where are they now situation where Justin was saying, you told the whole world that I couldn't get an erection. Y'all, when something doesn't make sense, it's because it doesn't make sense, okay? And it doesn't make sense usually because you're missing a piece of it. Now that we understand the piece of Justin couldn't get an erection, I don't know if it's necessary that he couldn't get an erection. I think it's more so that he couldn't maintain one, right? Because in order to penetrate, you have to maintain, you have to get one, right? But in order to, you know, make the D go further, you got to maintain it. So I think it's a, a semantics game between getting and maintaining and that whole erection thing. So listen, um, I think the worst thing Alexis could have done is bring this conversation to the forefront in front of, you know, 2 million, 5 million, the general public um, on a nationally syndicated show. But, you know, listen, we're here now. And the problem with bringing something up that you don't necessarily want to talk about is that it's very hard to put the genie back in the bottle. At this point, we know that y'all attempted to have sex, 
apparently it, it worked for him or and didn't work for you but y'all don't really want to talk about the ins and outs of it but y'all brought it to the table so people are inherently curious it's very hard to put the genie back in the bottle so um i'm just gonna leave this conversation to the damn where are they now episode and y'all drop down in the comments if you want me to review that one um i'm on the fence but if you you know put enough comments in there or enough likes i might go ahead and do it but um I think that the whole erection piece was the piece that they were missing in terms of why um, Alexis thinks that it wasn't any sort of fruitful consummation. Now let's move on to our last topic and let's talk about um, Nate butting into the Alexis and um, Justin conversation. Y'all, um, I will never say that when someone does you wrong, you, you're not entitled to your feelings, you're not entitled to feel a certain way and to go with that emotion. But at the point in time that we get to the end of the reunion, Nate, in my eyes, you've already been vindicated, okay? Nobody believes Justin. People believe that Justin is, you know, emotional. He's unfollowed everyone. He's not a very, you know, believable witness or a believable victim in a sense in terms of what he says happened to him. So in in my eyes and probably a lot of yours, you know, Nate has already been vindicated. So the only thing that 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 kind of dawns on me when it comes to why Nate keeps butting into the Justin Alexis situation is because, you know, he just wants to get his lick back at that point, okay? This man hits you, you trying to get your lick back and that's where it begins and that's where it ends, okay? Because you cannot tell me that of all out of all the people on that stage that needed to talk during the Alexis and Justin situation that Nate should have been in the forefront of that list, okay? You should have been the quietest person on the stage. You that that man, you know, attacked you. You've said your piece. People have said their piece. Nobody believes him. You're vindicated. Let it go. It's over. Okay. But it's that whole testosterone masculine thing. You can't let it go. Listen. That's why Stasha was like, "Can y'all both just stop? Okay. It is over. Y'all won't be able to figure it out. Y'all don't mess with each other." just move on at that point, okay? Because at the end of the day, it just becomes very, very taxing for everyone around you that you can't move on and let it go, okay? And listen, Kevin wasn't even asking Nate no damn direct questions, okay? Because I'm sure then people got into Kevin's ear, earbud or whatever and was like, listen, Justin and Nate finna turn this nice Lifetime show into Zeus Network or VH1, baby. This is not love and hip hop. This is a nice family-based show, okay? We do not have those, you know, shucking and jiving shenanigans down to Lifetime, okay? So listen, Nate was put in a bad situation in terms of what Justin did to him. But at the point in time, at the end of the reunion, and in terms of what they were talking about, it was a very personal conversation between Alexis and Justin, though it was being done in a group format, there was no fruitful piece that Nate could have added to that situation. He just really just seemed to not be able to let that whole conversation, that whole rivalry between him and Justin go. And he just seemed to be trying to get his lick back. Nothing fruitful at all. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know if you agree. But really, y'all, I think that's really all I want to talk about on this episode. So if you liked what I said, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on all social media at DatDamnDasher. And until next time, y'all, drop down in these comments and let me know if you want me to review the, um, the Where Are They Now episode. I am on the fence, okay, because technically I'm done with the season. But listen, I am a bit interested based on this preview, that whole erection conversation between Justin and Alexis and whether or not Stasha and Nate are truly going to go the distance. So listen, hell, I've already talked myself into it. So y'all wait for me next week with the Where Are Now episode, Where Are They Now episode, and we'll talk later. Bye.